Hi, Yins. How are you doing today? It is Wednesday, September 5th. Yes, yeah, September 5th, 2018. How are you all doing today? I'm doing pretty well. I just got home from work, and I thought it's been a couple weeks since I've checked in with you for an update. So it is about time that I go ahead and give you a progress update on my stitching and actually some knitting. So I have some progress for you. I have a shop update as well as some big, big plans to talk to you about today. So I hope uh, you are all settled in for a little bit here and uh, doing well with some stitching or knitting and let's get started. First off, I, a couple announcements. I want to congratulate and thank Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts um, and Evertote for asking me to participate in her her first official summer. I don't know if it's going to be an annual thing, but her her first annual or her first kit release. Sorry, I couldn't think of the words I wanted to use today. Um, so Caroline released her first bag pattern and floss collection um, about 10 days ago. And as of this morning, she messaged me and said that they were all sold out. So she offered 50 bags 50 patterns that I produced and um, along with the, the bag and the pattern came a set of Victorian Motto sampler threads. Uh, I believe it was four different shades of blue that she helped uh, establish. And so I want to thank her for asking me to participate and design a, a pattern for that kit. And um, now that all of those patterns or all of those kits have been sold, I can now say that uh, the pattern is available on my Etsy store. So this is a little bit of shop update for you there. Uh, we're going to go a little bit out of order. So if you haven't already seen the, the update that I released earlier this morning on the channel. I did make a separate video for that update, but I'll go ahead and show you this because this is also an FFO or a fully finished object since I last spoke with you. Um, and so here is the design that I went ahead and designed for the, the kit. It is called Stories of the North Part 1. So if you catch it, it's a part one. So there will be other parts with the series. I, I intend for there to be five parts. Uh, I also intend, what I plan on doing is also stitching this one more time. I think all five parts will look great as a bell pull. So this being the top of the bell pull, uh, more like a sun motif here. So uh, this is a blue heron that I designed. Um, and it has motifs of the island where Caroline lives throughout the summer. And, you know, we have wild blueberries stitched one over one on 28 count. So make sure that if you do go ahead and purchase this pattern that you are prepared to stitch on a higher count fabric because it uses two over two as well as one over one for the blueberries. So everything else is two over two, but the blueberries are one over one. And all of the consecutive patterns in the series will have a one over one element. And I did that not only for the, the detail, to give it a little bit of fine detail, but also for those that might not have switched to a higher count fabric yet, this might give them an opportunity or an, uh, a nudge to to venture into that and give it a, a, a chance. And it's just a tiny little bit of um, one over one just to give you a sampling of both the two over two as well as the one over one. So a little bit of a learning opportunity. So there is 
Stories of the North Part 1. Again, this, this, uh, it is, um, charted for two shades of DMC. But of course, as I expect for all of my pattern purchasers, be creative and do what you want and show us your creativity in the designs. Caroline is hosting a a stitch along for this, which she had mentioned to me this morning will probably start. She will begin in about a week when she's able to get some of uh, the the uh, once she's able to get the majority of the kits out uh, into the mail. Um, that she will go ahead and stitch, but you can start at any time once you purchase the pattern. I will also be stitching along for the sow so that I can start my my bell pool. So that is Stories of the North Part 1, and that is available in my Etsy store now, both as a PDF as well as an, a printed pattern that you can purchase, and I will mail it to you. Okay. Moving on, so let's get to, so again, congratulations, Caroline, on a successful launch and um, a super successful launch because you were able to sell out so quickly, so congratulations. Okay, so a little bit of uh, update since I haven't, I didn't check in last week. Last week I was at my mom's house. I was visiting her for almost a week and I didn't do any stitching for one whole week. I think it was from uh, th the Thursday after I last updated until last Thursday I didn't put any stitches in at all. Um, cross stitches. I, I just didn't feel like stitching. I also I did take some stitching with me to my mom's house but I didn't feel like stitching there. So I didn't. Um, but what I can show you is that um, I did update my Instagram on some other things such as uh, I did get to play in the dirt and work on the irises that I have been um, cultivating for many, many years since I was about in the third grade. Um, so I really, I am an, I used to be an avid gardener. I, I like to uh, garden outdoors. I'm much better at outdoor gardening than I am indoor gardening, but mainly now I just have indoor gardening. I'm pointing at my flowers over there because that's where they're at um, because that's all I have space for. I don't have an outdoor plot. So if I did, I'd probably have gardening. Um, and then I got to play in some fire and I burned up my mom's burn pile which is something you commonly do in, you know, the middle of the woods where I grew up. So, um, you know, scrap twigs and branches that fall from the trees when the wind blows and, you know, spare, you know, boxes of stuff that you bought and, you know, papers, you know, that you want to get rid of and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I did. Um, so let's get on to the stitching that I did do. So after the update, um, if you remember, I did finish the... Did I finish it or did I finish it the next day? I don't know. Right around the time that the last time I filmed, I went ahead and I, w I was working on mush uh, the mushroom sampler. And I was working over here on this mushroom motif here. So I went ahead. I'm not sure if this was in my last video that it was finished, but it is now finished. And last Thursday when I came home, I went ahead and started on this motif here. So here is the mushroom sampler. And now that I think about it, I think everything here was finished, but I still had some of the greenery left to stitch. Is I believe what was left. So, and then of course here is the the beginning of the 
button cap for the, the next mushroom um, motif. And as you can see, this is the inside corner of the border, so I am at the bottom of this side. But last Thursday, whenever I got home and I was stitching on this, I started stitching it. I stitched for about two hours, and then I was like, eh, I'm done. And I put it away. So, but there is my progress so far on the mushroom sampler. Very, very pleased with how it's looking, but I was ready for a change. So, Friday, I had to work. I didn't do any stitching Friday. And then Saturday morning, I decided I needed to do a new start. But I can't show you because it's a gift for Christmas. So I worked on that most of the weekend. And then, um, last night I decided, and then um, Monday night I didn't do, no, Monday I did stitch. I stitched on the gift. And then yesterday I decided to pull out my By the Bay Needle Art. 13th colony. Part 1. So this is part 1 of a three-part series I'm doing uh, landscape together, panoramic, and here is the progress. As you can see, I went ahead and everything was done this side of the giant tree and all the clouds. So as you um, I did what I did yesterday were these two colors of the hillside and the wood or the the roof of the house and the tree trunks of those three trees there. So that is my progress on by the bay. Not a whole lot of stitching, but a decent amount. Very, very pleased with that. I'm very, very happy with how that's turning out. I forgot to mention the the mushroom sampler is on the called 428 count linen that came with the, the kit that I purchased. And the by the bay is on 46 count Rocky Mountain linen by that I purchased from XJU Designs or XJU Designs. Uh, on Etsy. And that's all the stitching I have for you. Cross stitching. I have some knitting to show you here in a minute. So that is all the stitching I have. We'll get the plans in a minute. That's that's the big the big change. So um, no purchases. Yeah, I have a couple things coming in the mail, but nothing significant. I did purchase some DM. It just got really dark. I think it's because the sun went behind the cloud. Anyways, on Saturday, I did go to Joe and Fabrics and I purchased some. Saturday, I did go to Joe and Fabrics and buy some DMC for an upcoming new start that I have projected to start very, very soon. And um, yeah, so as you can see, I did have to adjust the lighting because the outdoor natural lighting took a turn for the worse. 
don't know what's going on there. So I went ahead and adjusted my lighting and hopefully it's okay. So my knitting, as I had mentioned before on my last video, I was going to go ahead and do a, I think I had mentioned that I was going to do a swatch, a gauge swatch for a, a new start. I went ahead and began, I did that gauge swatch and I have been knitting vigorously on this new um, sweater. I went ahead and started a new sweater and here is the sweater. It is from the, the rib magazine that I believe is no longer going to be in publication. Um, this is the yarn that I purchased from my brother a few months ago for the alchemy pullover. Go, alchemy pullover. So this is the alchemy pullover that I'm going to do. I purchased the yarn from him. He had he had it uh, picked out for the five color pattern. I am going to go ahead and up it to the ten pattern. Ten color pattern is my plan. Uh, but since the whole bottom of the sweater is just uh, the main color, I went ahead and got started just so I could get moving on the body. And then the sleeves are the same way. It's just all the main color. And then that way it'll give me time to pick out the remaining colors and then get that ordered and have it come in. So I went ahead and did the gauge swatch. And this is being uh, knit in Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. And this is uh, the main color is chestnut. Not that you can read that very well. There we go. Maybe that's better. So the main color is chestnut. And here is my progress. So I measured last night and I have pretty much exactly 10 inches of the the body of the the body. The body of the body done. So there is, I'm not used to holding up large things of knitting, so it's very different than, to me it's very different than stitching. I don't know why, it's similar but different. There we go. So, there is my sweater. You know, it is now mainly just stockinette round and round and round, forever and ever and ever, but um, I'm really liking it so far. Uh, of course, this is my very first very large project, so I'm taking my time and uh, trying to do it the best that I can. And I'm very pleased with it so far. I don't know why I can't get it. There we go. Look at that, Gerald. Very pleased. Anyways, so that is my sweater so far. So I'm going to keep working on that, and uh, next week we should have more progress on my pullover. Okay, now the fun stuff. Fun yet um, anxiety ridden. So, I have been watching many, 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 many of you participate in Arbitrary August. And while participating in Arbitrary August, many of you, Michelle Bendy included, um, have been utilizing that tiny decision maker, what is it called? Uh, tiny Decisions app to choose which project you were going to use or stitch on each day. Randomly today, I got the idea. I don't know if it's a very good idea, but I got the idea that I want to try this for a week. So I went ahead and I 
loaded all of my projects and it's going to wash out. Let me see if I can into the app. And now it's going to wash out. There we go. So I loaded all of my projects into the app. I only have six that I can show you. So I loaded the six in that I can show you. Now this is only cross stitch projects. And each day for the next week starting tonight, I'm going to spin the wheel and I'm going to stitch on that project for at minimum one hour. So, the projects that I have to stitch on are By the Bay, Mushroom Sampler, My Heaven and Earth Designs Henry VIII, My Thea Governor London, the the most recent new start fairy tale village the very ginormous mammoth large thing that I only just started Chatelaine, my Chatelaine the tea house challenge and that's it so those are my six so tea house challenge Fairy Tale Village, Henry VIII, Thirteenth Colony, Mushroom Sampler, and London. Now, So I will stitch on each one of those for a minimum of an hour. If I really like it, I'll just stitch on it for the rest of the night. But I want to stitch on, um, I'm saying at minimum of an hour, because if I really don't feel like stitching on it, I'm not going to force myself to stitch on it, because then I won't stitch. But I'm going to force myself to try this as to experience a different perspectives and a different way of, of choosing projects to stitch on. Now. We all know this is very, very out of my comfort zone. And, um, but I think it's a good way to experience the projects that I haven't worked on for a while. London, my Chatelaine, Henry, because, and I even pulled out Henry and sat it on the wall right over there so that I can start looking at it to get motivated to stitch on them because I really want to stitch on them. I really want to but I'm not here mentally to do it yet. So I'm hoping this will help to spur some of that motivation because as we all know the last month I haven't really had a whole lot of motivation to stitch. So by doing this, I'm hoping to get that motivation. Now, I'm also, I also want to say I'm hoping to have part one of this done by the end of the month, which should be easy because all I have left is this section right here. And it's not horribly complicated. It's mainly solid stitching and a ship. So that should not take me too long to do. Uh, that would be that's a mini goal I have to do because October 1st I'm starting the Hedgehog Sal. So I would really like to have one of my projects done before I move on to starting a new project. So I had messaged Mindy from Minty Stitcher to run this crazy notion of using the the decision maker app by her 
and she thought it was such a good idea, she's going to do it with me. So if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon, um, if, and if you want to, feel free to join me. Um, like I said, I'm only going to, um, I'm doing it for one week to see how I like it and to experience a different perspective. And we'll go from there. So, and if I don't like it, then I'm still going, I'm going to follow through for the seven days and I'll report back next Wednesday. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm probably going to do this vlog, the next update vlog style with a check-in at the very end. So like I will have many updates each for each day just so you can see the before and the after. Um, that is my intention. Of course, intentions change. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to go check out my Etsy store. Like, uh, I guess on Etsy it's favorite or heart my store so you can get updates as to when I release the other parts of that series as well as I have some other designs that are just about ready to come out so I'm hoping to get that stuff ready to go here pretty quickly so I can make a decent um, mini substantial release uh, those are going to be some smalls uh, some different smalls um, so I, uh, looking forward to that and, um, we're going to go from there. So, um, yeah, that's all I have for you today. So I will see you on my next video, probably the, the stitch with me this weekend. Uh, I'm not, I'm being, and then of course I'm going to be doing my vlogging through the week. And I will check back later, so don't forget to always be creative.